we are proud to now be opening our new emergency department. More than just a building, this new integrated front door represents a change in how we work and a significant investment for local people. It's been a huge team effort to bring this to life. Seeing it come alive is amazing, but it's, it, I, yeah, I care about what this department can bring. I feel hugely proud to have played a small part in what's going to happen uh, in Swindon. We really want this to be everybody's department, not just our department. We're having money injected into our town, which is going to improve our healthcare. It's getting even better here in Swindon, and the new a and &E will be a huge success. To just to be part of it and to say to see the progress made on a month by month basis, it, it, incredibly proud of it. I literally can't wait to see it come to life in real life now, from plans into a real structure. I'm proud to have watched it develop and grow in this wonderful way that brings uh, you know, a transformed service. It may have taken only 18 months to be built, but this is a project which has been in development for a long time. And it all began with a simple idea. So back in about 2016, I started the work to develop um, the outline case for uh, an expanded emergency department, but a wider expansion uh, of the hospital site, which included the, the expansion land next to the hospital, the urgent treatment centre, and a number of other areas that would make a difference, hopefully, to uh, the population of Swindon in the years to come. I was listening very carefully to what senior executives and clinicians were telling me about uh, the department of GWH. And then there came a move to uh, really push for uh, national involvement. And indeed, uh, in part of increasing spending on the NHS, we were selected to be one of the projects for uh, that much needed improvement here in Swindon. Before any work could be done to bring our new idea to life, it had to be funded. Between national funding and trust money, a plan was generated. The funding comes from a pool and a, and a bid was put in um, sort of many years ago and that was around £29 million from, from government, government funding. Part of that was used to, to pay for the expansion land. Uh, the other part was you know, we had to get permission to spend that on the IFD programme and so part of that is a, is a robust business case process. Well, I was very much involved in lobbying ministers. I remember meeting the health secretary uh, in the House of Commons about it. I remember late night phone calls to uh, one of the ministers in the health department with specific responsibility for hospital funding in order to really push the case for GWH and for Swindon. I'm incredibly proud really that we've got to this stage. It's just under 34 million, which has been you know, developed through trust capital, some national funding, and just really, you know, to, to make sure that we can provide the facilities we want. And this just recognises the real need we have for this local population. I think to get that funding in recognises the needs we have and will enable us to do a much better service in the future. When we got that funding back in, uh, it was announced back in um, 2018, it was actually another 1,000 over 1,500 days before we got the money in the bank account because it's still a huge amount of work because you never quite know up until that point that all, whether all of the work's going to pay off. And ever since, there's been close collaboration to ensure that every single pound spent on this project has been done so wisely. Any project like this is a, is a massive balancing act between um, what the architects and the builders say is physically possible in terms of a, of a structure, balanced against cost, um, but also balanced against the um, the original concept that we had in terms of, of, of how we wanted our front door to work. I live in Swindon uh, and I have been to this hospital. I'm very, very proud um, of not just what we've done, it really has been a team. So ultimately we've all had the same goal um, and I really believe we have, we've achieved that. It's about bringing that really nursing voice and that patient voice to the project, um, considering the quality and the care that we're providing alongside the bricks and the mortar and the design and looking at how that design can support patient care, but also how you know it's an opportunity to review everything as we move to a new department. So McBain's, our cost advisors, were also pretty key to all of this. So they were constantly advising us in terms of affordability um, in relation to what we could eventually commit to in terms of a design and what we were actually going to build. It's testament to the, to the team. It's a real one team, private and public, working to the same goals. Part of the money for the project has been donated by the people of Swindon, Wiltshire and beyond. They've given their money to help our charity, 
brighter futures with their Way Forward Appeal. We launched our Way Forward Appeal back in October 2022, which is to raise £1.6 million to support the, the project as a whole. Just over a year ago now, I had a double heart attack. And I was so enamoured about the way they treated me here, the way they looked after me that I felt I had to give something back. But when those big checks come in or I, I get an email to say that someone's fundraising and they've come up with something weird and wonderful, my heart just bursts out my chest. The vision throughout the project has been for the Trust to be delivering a truly integrated front door. Our vision was brought one step closer when we opened our new urgent treatment centre, modernising the care we provide to our patients and how they interact with our services. The first was the urgent treatment centre, um, for which we secured uh, funding in 2020, um, and that was completed in um, July 22. Uh, and in reality, that was kind of the first step um, in the improvement works. And the urgent, urgent treatment centre was built um, in line with the clinical model that was um, devised um, throughout the second half of 2019. What will happen is the patient comes through to the urgent treatment centre front doors and is navigated by the navigator, either to remain in the UTC or to navigate straight through to the emergency department. The UTC, along with our new emergency department, reflects that this is not just about a building, but a change in the way we work. It's not just about the building itself, it's about bringing the clinicians together at the front door from all specialties because they need to get the senior decision makers and all the people who can make decisions about the patient's care earlier in the patient's journey so potentially avoid unnecessary admissions that cause more harm to the patient. It's just that ability to kind of have, have something that's a catalyst to bring everything together to completely change the way that we deliver emergency care. The patients will be directed straight way to the right place so the initial assessment will be made at the right place first time. I believe that the Integrated Front Door project is very much a pioneer work across the UK. As the UTC was opening, attention turned towards our new emergency department. But having an idea still requires lots of work to turn it into something real. And that's where we had some help bringing the project to life. I think there's a perception from the general public and a lot of people that architects just produce a set of drawings and that's it and that's where we leave it. But our role is very much part of the process all the way through to handover. The cubicles themselves are bigger, which has massive advantages for how you can manage patients. But the environment itself, we've done so much work to design an environment that primarily benefits patients, um, but also benefits staff. So the, the, the touch is like having glass doors, um, which can help reduce noise for patients. Yeah, it's, it's a completely different environment. I think the spaces are radically improved. I can't underestimate the clinical flows. You know, this is a model that I think other areas of the country will take on board. And those flows will increase movement through, but also privacy and dignity, comfort, part of the design, part of the engagement with the staff, the users and the community is to create places that make it a better place to work, but also a better place, a more efficient place to cope as a patient as well. It's a huge, you know, an absolute privilege to be involved in this project. It's such a unique opportunity. Um, like I said, I've lived this emergency department for 20 years. I've, I've seen it change and to know I've had an influence on its future is you know, it's a real honour. Those designs had to consider lots of elements, including how we can make sure what we were building was green and sustainable. Sustainability has been fundamental to the IFD development. So when these developments were designed, there wasn't enough electrical capacity from the grid to support them. So the Trust decided to install air source heat pumps, which is a form of renewable energy. We have extended the, the sort of sustainability to look at even material choices. So what we make, the building walls and the doors, what insulation we use. So all of that contributes to, to the efficiency of the building as a whole. When the money was available, it was very exciting to begin the work with our groundbreaking ceremony. Before only a few months later, we were back, putting the finishing touches of the roof of the new building. That progress only happened thanks to the hard work of those who had to construct our new building, a space where people will be cared for for years to come. Right at the very beginning, it, it's around about the fallibility, so it's, it's giving the Trust the best possible project in terms of um, the environment to work in for, for them to do their jobs in um, every day. I mean, the, you know, for the Trust and, and in the healthcare sector, you have you know, real social value impact on, on the community and, and the residents. So I think, you know, it's, it's a real 
nice nice feeling for me really to be involved in in, in such projects really there's a lot of planning that goes ahead so it's in the ground so infrastructure it's knowing what's there in the traditional build where maybe in a field it doesn't matter what's in the ground uh, it's it's a little bit different with a hospital where you've got infrastructure that's critical uh, to life safety throughout the design development and build of the new integrated front door the views of local residents have been reflected we've engaged with local groups we have the local school coming in to have a look around we've had the scouts groups and we've listened to what you want we know what you want and we're trying to give it to you it's great we're here with the cubs and scouts today finding out a bit about this new fantastic development it's great that the, our Cubs and Scouts can come out and actually try and see things, potential new careers for them in the future. I'm so glad we get to invite you a lot of things. This is one of the most exciting ones. I've been able to have an impact from the very beginning about having conversations around accessibility, mainly for the people who use wheelchairs, but people who've got physical disabilities and how they can navigate the space of the emergency department. It's been a huge project that's taken years to come to life. But now, thanks to the hard work of people in Swindon, Westminster and across the country, we have clinicians delivering innovative ways of working and a new expanded building delivering truly integrated care. Which will mean we're always there to help the people of Swindon and Wiltshire whenever they need us.